Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking about free agency, how to figure out uh, when it's appropriate to sign players, and what kinds of players you'll generally be looking to sign uh, in just about any free agency. So first we're going to be talking about um, batters, and this is going to be the 2023 free agent pool, so it's not a particularly deep group of players in OOTP other than of course Shohei Otani. But we're going to be uh, essentially just taking a look at these players and then trying to figure out which of them would be worth signing, or at least discussing who would be worth signing. So the number one thing that I want to preface here is, generally speaking, it is a bad idea to sign players on long-term deals that go past their age 35 season. Um, that is, like when, With players like Brandon Crawford, he's a decent player. You could maybe sign him to play short, or, or excuse me, second or third base, maybe shortstop for your team. But you'd likely be wanting to sign him to a one- or two-year deal, not a long-term deal because of the risk of regression and of course if you do sign to a long-term deal you do it with the preface that you're likely going to trade him and you certainly don't want to sign him to high average annual value contract either uh, so this is a very risky contract for somebody who's almost 37 years old at this point anyways that is the number one rule of free agency i generally in free agency almost always avoid long-term large average annual value contracts to general players because they're risky. Um, they they will eat up a large portion of your budget, especially when you're a smaller market team. And if things do not go well, then you're looking at what could end up being a pretty significant hole in terms of your finances and in terms of your team. So signing somebody like Brandon Crawford could, if he regresses just a little bit on that defense and a touch in the offense, which is perfectly realistic for someone who's 37, then he becomes a not particularly useful player and someone you're paying $20 million a year to, which if your budget is 100, or if your payroll is $120 million, which is typical for uh, small to medium market teams in OOTP, then you'd be looking at, well, a sixth of your payroll completely eaten up. So generally speaking, signing uh, free agents is something that i would frown upon now there is of course one except or excuse me signing big dollar free agents is something i would generally frown upon now there is of course one exception to this rule and it is true superstar caliber players the kinds of guys who are league best uh, especially if they're durable shohei otani is of course not but he is still just above and beyond everyone else in terms of his talent he's capable of playing right field decently defensively he's very good pitcher he's one of the best hitters in the league he's a good base runner everything about him is great Shohei Otani is the type of player that is worth signing to a big dollar contract for two reasons reason number one is that he is a type of talent that you are not going to be able to find anywhere else especially not in trades uh, or I yeah especially not trades because it's going to be so difficult to convince teams to deal players of this caliber uh, the second thing is that his contract is actually not that risky. So, yes, he's a superstar caliber player. He's going to be far better than whoever you'd be replacing him with uh, if you were to not sign him. But the second thing is that even if he regresses a little bit and you start to see some risk, you can trade him and you still get value out of the contract because he's just that good. Uh, he can regress and the AI will still think that he is more valuable than his dollar cost so apparently the baltimore orioles who i'm currently controlling have already submitted otani a contract and that is generally a pretty smart decision six years at 160 million dollars is a little bit under 30 million aav actually so especially when you find players like that high caliber talent who are cheaper than you would normally expect then they're worth signing the second uh, if we take a look at Clayton Kershaw here, here's a perfect example, um, even better, than, frankly, than Brandon Crawford of somebody you don't want to sign. He's coming off a big statistical season, which clearly outperforms his ratings. Uh, the most notable thing here, his high strikeout rate is higher than you would expect with the stuff. Uh, it's not a huge overperformance, and the walk rate is probably a bit better than you would expect with the control, but the .7 home runs per nine. This is not sustainable for somebody with 50 movement. A league-leading .7 home runs per nine at that. Uh, and a 278 Babbitt, which is actually kind of repeatable with a good defense. But generally, 
pitchers who have lower BABIPs, who have these types of seasons where it looks like they just outperform their ratings, are going to be more expensive in free agency than they should be. Same thing for hitters. If someone clearly outperformed their ratings, they're less likely to be signable for a fair price. Somebody who underperformed their ratings, like I'm guessing Shohei Otani did, yeah, he had a slightly below average pitching and hitting season. Uh, this is the type of player, or excuse me, just pitching. I don't know how he did hit. He had a solid hitting season, but ultimately not something that would have been living up to his ratings. Guys like Otani who underperformed their ratings are going to be better values to sign. So that's just generally something to keep in mind. Now, another thing I want to preface here is generally speaking, you don't actually want to get your talent free agency. You almost always go want to get your talent through trades because players will come cheaper. You can sign them to extensions that will be more affordable than free agent contracts. But it is incredibly, uh, you're going to get better value essentially out of trading for players in most cases than signing them as free agents. So who do you want to sign in free agency? Now that we've got our basic ground set, uh, as I mentioned earlier with Otani, superstar caliber players can often be worthwhile signings if you have the money for them. Do not break the bank trying to sign a superstar player. It's not worth it. And the second group of players is players that fit a specific need. So, for example, at a low price, I might add, let's say you need a backup catcher who is a captain. So let's just go here to the... Uh, I will find the personality sorter, and then I will sort for captains here. All right, so let's say that our team is lacking in captains. We have some bad personalities, and we want to improve our chemistry. Catchers typically can be captains at a higher rate than most players, um, and backup catchers are only going to play about 40 games a season. So we're looking for a backup catcher who's a captain and still provide decent value to our club at a really low cost. You'll notice that just sorting by catcher who's, our, who's a captain, everybody is cheap here. So let's take a look at our options. Number one, we've got Yasmani Grandal. He's a more offensively oriented, but the one I'm probably going to be looking at here is Austin Hedges. Excellent defense, captain personality, $2 million a year. This is the kind of player that you would look to sign in free agency. Somebody who can be a backup type player or someone who can play a role on your team at a very low cost and provide clear value over, say, a Rule 5 drafty or someone you could trade for at minimal cost. Another type might be a utility infielder, which you'd probably be looking for relatively similar things. In fact, just look at the demand over here. If it's less than $5 million, then that's probably someone you'd want to consider. So we got say, Ahiri Adrianza. And again, with these types of players, you can usually find them on waivers in the Rule 5 draft, available for no cost in trades, but sometimes you could find free agents who can fulfill your need more easily or more quickly or something. We've got here Takuro Akai, another potential utility infielder, uh, a little bit stronger bat, about $2 million demand. The international players, uh, and this would be a good time to mention this, International players will typically sign for less than their true value if they were an established MLB player because there is a quote-unquote risk factor associated with them. In real baseball, it's absolutely the case. You don't know how players are necessarily going to perform switching leagues, but in OTP, ratings are ratings, and it's not like a guy is likely to plummet once you sign him from an international league. So generally speaking, international players are what they look like and typically are undervalued by the free agency market. So we've also got uh, here Jonathan Aranda, a pretty good offensive player. Not really somebody I'd be looking to play as a utility infielder, but potentially he's got outfield rings. He could be a left fielder at low cost with a little bit of upside on a rebuilding squad or someone you signed to a minor league deal or something. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, these types of lower cost players are going to be better values, international players, that type of thing. And there's one last category of players that I generally am willing to sign in free agency, and that is relief pitchers. We got one big one here, Liam Hendricks, who's eight and a half million dollars. If my bullpen is not absolutely set, spending less than ten million dollars on a high quality relief pitcher is usually a very good move, especially if they have higher stamina. Hendricks obviously doesn't, but he's still a very good relief pitcher and probably worth the money, especially since he was, of course, injured last year and only pitched 14 innings. So uh, relief pitchers are probably one of the most undervalued comedies in OTP. 
at least uh, they were. They're becoming a little bit more fairly valued these days in modern OOTP. But still, the fact that you can get relievers for so cheap is very interesting to me. The concept of signing relievers in free agency is that when you're signing a position player to say $20 million a year, when they're maybe marginally better than someone you could trade for at without giving up anything valuable, and you can sign them to like a $7.5 million a year extension, relief pitchers are going to provide fair value over each other, or over your other players. It's not like with your offense where you can just bury a bad guy in the lineup. I mean, you can do that to some extent with relief pitchers, but you have a lot of relief pitchers. All of them are generally going to pitch at least 40 to 50 innings in a season. Your best ones are going to pitch 100 or so innings. So it's you could think of it in terms of marginal value to starting pitchers. A typical starting pitcher will throw about oh, 170, 180 innings a year. A typical relief pitcher will throw about... 70 to 80 or excuse me 60 to 80 innings in a year so uh, usually at least about a third of the number of innings a starting pitcher has also relief pitchers will typically throw higher leverage innings than starting pitchers which increases the value of the innings they throw so relief pitchers are going to be maybe a third to half the value of starting pitchers uh, closers in particular, if you or excuse me, not closers, stoppers. If you have a guy who's throwing 100 to 120 innings in a season, that is a very valuable relief pitcher. At higher quality inning, or excuse me, higher leverage innings than a starting pitcher, that relief pitcher can be more valuable than starting pitchers in some cases. So my point here is that even the best relievers in OTP are only going to cost you about 15 million to 17 and a half million dollars a year. See Edwin Diaz in live starts. Uh, for a typical example, which is actually more fair to how OTP manages relievers these days. Uh, but he's going to be worth probably twice that amount of money. And I'm probably exaggerating a little bit here, but with your high-end relievers, they could be almost as valuable as starting pitchers, especially in the playoffs where they're going to see more frequent work due to having more rest opportunities. Um, and... Really, relief pitchers, just an incredibly valuable commodity OTP. They're pretty much the only high-quality free agent signing that you are going to make on a regular basis to have the best relief core possible. You generally want at least five true top-end reliever type guys in your bullpen, and you want everyone in your bullpen to be at least a strong reliever because of the value of the innings that they are going to pitch. So other options here that might fill that role, Reynaldo Lopez is very good, Conato is very good, um, we've got guys like Jimmy Nelson, and this is a especially valuable signing because he's only $2 million a year. If you see a relief pitcher who's clearly better than their cost, definitely a value signing. Anyways, there's one last group of players that you are going to sign or look to sign in free agency, and there aren't really many here, so I'm just going to take a look at Jalen Beeks. Although he's generally better than this, uh, so never mind in that. But you're going to be looking to sign players. Maybe uh, now Julio Reyes is demanding too much money. You're going to be looking to sign players in free agency who are worth far more than their demand. So if, for example, we have a shortstop with excellent defense, or probably not the best example, if you have a first baseman who's a true power bat, a, a well above average hitter, but he only wants a few million dollars in his contract, you don't really have a first baseman set. Sign that first baseman and trade him down the line for higher value. If you are absolutely certain that a free agent signing will turn into a good value trade ship, then it's generally worth making the acquisition. But anyways, the big takeaway here is that other than relief pitchers, free agents are not generally worth signing. You usually want to look to get your players from other spots, and it will generally be better value to get your players from other spots. Relief pitchers, international players and backup cheap players. The three categories of free agents you're going to look to sign. And, of course, superstar players like Otani occasionally. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you on the next one.